A new year, a new look, a new format. There's nothing like a fresh start, and for what concerns this programme, we've decided to bring you news of CERN under a different angle. And who better to inaugurate this change than Professor Rolf Hoyer, our Director General. Hello and welcome. Professor Hoyer has just returned from attending the World Economic Forum in Davos and the annual LHC workshop in Chamonix. Two new features also complete the programme. I'm delighted to be joined by my two colleagues, Stéphane Petit <coughs> and François Briard. Welcome to you both. Hello, Anna. Hello. Stéphane is going to take us on a trip around CERN's tunnels and has a full recent press review up his sleeve. As for François, he also has a surprise up his sleeve, but he will present two comic books relating to CERN. Welcome to Spotlight on CERN. Hello, Professor Hoyer. So you started your mandate as Director General in January 2009, and you're embarking on your third year in this capacity. The first two years have certainly been exciting with the LHC startup and first physics. Has anything changed in your professional view? Well, you would lie if you would say nothing has changed. Uh, on, the, on the other hand, I don't think much has changed because um, on the one hand, you learn a lot, you improve, hopefully, uh, and you use the knowledge which you get through the years of management for the next years. On the other hand, nothing much has changed. I don't think my curiosity has changed. I'm as curious as before to work with people, to see the physics coming out. Um, it's an ongoing challenge for you. It's an o ongoing challenge, but the challenge is made easy by the fact that everybody is uh, working extremely well, Every, everybody is pulling on the same string, uh, and it's, it, everybody is not only pulling at the same string, but also in the same direction, which That's is very important. Fantastic proof of collaboration. And uh, so I'm, I'm very pleased about how the lab is working, and um, maybe the, the biggest thing, the biggest change is that I have even got more optimism now about uh, results which we might expect soon so I'm really looking forward to the next one to two years of running with the LHC but not only with the LHC we should not forget the other experiments. Absolutely, jolly exciting times and from your point of view this is a more abstract question is there anything you feel convinced about but which yet remains to be proven? Well it's indeed a rather abstract question um, and I don't think it's a question if I'm convinced about something. It's more a question of uh, what nature is giving us. It, it, it's not a question of my feelings. But uh, one thing I would really like to see coming up in the next uh, few years is a better view of how the early universe was developing. And this is something I really hope that LHC can maybe not prove, but present the first step towards the proof, for example, what the dark matter is, and maybe also settle the question of the, uh, of the standard model, mm -hmm. especially as I expressed it already in, 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 in some other presentations. For me, the years 2011 and 2012 are maybe giving the answer on the Shakespeare question for the Higgs boson, to be or not to be. A wonderful question, and we hope we have the answer soon. So, Stefan, you've been taking a trip down the underground. Yes, and I'd like to show you places of CERN that are not well known. Don't forget your helmet. Let's take a look. Hello. Today, I invite you to a journey into the service tunnels. Follow me. This way. Mind the step. We are now... Beneath the site of Mera. There are more than 15 kilometers of service tunnels just like this one, where you can find every type of service like electricity, heating, ventilation, water. Everything you want is here. As you see, the LHC is not the only place that has many, many kilometers of tunnel. See you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs> Sorry for my broken English. Huh? <clears throat> yeah, so here are some press cuttings. And thank you, for, uh, thank you to the press office for the, these cuttings. I will start with a paper from Le Dauphiné Libéré 
about the educational program called Being a Scientist. Thanks to this program, 700 kids will discover what being a scientist means. <coughs> they will attend conferences, they will meet scientists, they will carry on their own experiments, and we hope that they will uh, want to become uh, scientists or physicists. Another paper from uh, Le Dauphiné Libéré, this time about the New Year wishes expressed by the Director General, Rolf Feuer, in front of uh, local representatives from Switzerland and France. In his speech, he pointed out that LHC showed excellent performances and that CERN had a great drive in terms of development in the area. And now let's go international with the paper from Nature called The Petabyte Highway. What is one petabyte? It's one <coughs> million gigabytes. And the paper comes back on the 13 petabytes that were produced by the LHC experiment during 2010, the equivalent of a stack of CD-ROMs of 14 kilometers. That's quite a lot of work for the worldwide computing grid, a kind of giant computer scattered around the planet, uh, with its 200,000 cores that will share the analysis of the data. And we'll finish with, with an editorial written by the Director General, echoing in Le Temps and the NZZ. Uh, Rolf Feuer comes back on the speech he gave at the World Economic Forum in Davos, where he was invited. He says that there cannot be innovation without fundamental research, and no laboratory would be able to work without the technology brought by applied science. And thanks to this uh, virtual circle we, we have today, the GPS, the cell phones, and the imaging for uh, medicine. So the question is not to choose between supporting either fundamental research or applied science, but to support both of them. Yes, the world is quite complex. <coughs> quite and complex I, indeed. Yeah. Thank you very much, Stefan. Thank you. So having listened to his press review, to you, what is essential or of interest but is rarely mentioned? I think he touched on two of the subjects which are rather close to my heart and which are not too often mentioned, and I think we have to mention them more often. One thing is really this virtuous circle of uh, basic science, driving innovation, driving applied science, driving innovation, being the base for basic science. So I think this is one thing which we have to point out more and more, and I think it's also taken up more and more. So I think that is one message which we need to bring out to the entire world, not only in the research area, but also to uh, industry uh, of uh, industry responsible as well as uh, politicians and, and, and opinion makers. The second thing which is even less often talked about is the point why is science or research not part of the daily life? Why are talking why are people talking about uh, computer computer games, soccer? I'm a soccer fan so I, I like to talk about soccer, but why don't they talk about research? Because everything what we have today is based on research. So therefore the, to, to start already with the kids in school to show them what a researcher is. I think it's, a, it's one of the small but important steps forward to bring that into everyday life. At the beginning of the 20th century, it was customary to talk about science. Today, nobody does it. So we have to do that. We have to bring back that culture. We have to attract children into science as well, indeed. Well, yeah. thank you very much. Hello, Francois, and welcome to your first Spotlight. Yes, hello, Anna. Uh, so you have a surprise up your sleeve for us? Yes, we'll try to discover whether the LHC particles can be fined for, for speeding. Oh, that's and all that in less than one minute. Good luck. Let's have a look. The LHC is a particle accelerator. It will accelerate tiny components of matter like protons. And it will accelerate them at an incredible speed more than 99% of the speed of light which travels in vacuum at about 300,000 kilometers per second. Imagine the following. We will send a beam of light simultaneously with a beam of protons of the LHC to the closest star of our solar system, Proxima Centauri. The beam of light will take about 4.2 years to reach that star and the beam of protons 4.2 years plus 2 seconds only. In fact, the particles will go around the LHC ring 27 km tunnel more than 11,000 times every second. At such speeds, there is little risk that the police speed radar sees anything. Well, the police certainly have a challenge there. Yeah, but I've got a lot of work with that. 
<laughs> cars and normal vehicles, not protons. Certainly, and you found two comic books you want to tell us yeah, about. Yeah, two comic books uh, in French, so if people want to learn some French, a very popular art in the French-speaking countries. Let's start with Le Maître de l'Atome, which is uh, uh, The Adventures of Guy Lefranc, a character which was invented in 1952. And this was supposed to be the second book of the series. And in fact, the book was written in 1954, when CERN was created, and never been drawn. And it's been drawn only recently with new uh, drawers. And in uh, this book, uh, the journalist, uh, the adventure of this journalist, bring him to CERN. And the uh, director general of that time, Felix Bloch, explained to him that CERN is doing fundamental research, which is important and interesting to see that CERN's message were already uh, d shown and uh, distributed, sorry, in uh, comic books. Um, we have then a second comic book more recent, and uh, Stefan has shown us there are many underground tunnels at CERN, so it's a sous-sol underground, and it's made by two local authors uh, from Geneva, uh, Pierre Vazem and Tom Tirabosco, and it is published by Futuropolis. And in this one, the LHC uh, tunnel is playing an important part, it's really one character of the story, very dark story with parallel universes, a very surprising end which I'll let you discover. Oh, we're excited already. Can we find these in the Sand Bookshop? I don't think so, but they, would, they should be, be there soon, I guess. Thank you very much, Francois. Thank you, Stéphane. And thank you, Professor Hoyer, for inaugurating this first new format spotlight. Join me, Francois and Stéphane, next month when we will be meeting Monsieur Spiro, the President of Sand Council. Thank you and see you soon. <laughs>